sometimes think that how can we stop uh, the sufferings which keep happening to us there are threefold miseries in this world about which we are going to discuss and how to get rid of those miseries well to some extent at least all right so here we continue with the second shloka from the shrimad bhagavatam which is first canto first chapter second shloka all right and if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding anything in your life then you can please go to my website you will find the link to the website in the description section below and if you have not watched this series of the shrimad bhagavatam then please go and watch it from the beginning otherwise you will not understand maybe what i am saying and yes before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and he's going to speak now <laughs> not yet hopefully is very soon so the shloka is we will recite once again because the recitation of the shrimad bhagavatam is very important 1.1.2 dharma projita kaitavatro paramo nirmatsara naam satam vedyam vastava matra vastu shivadham भागवते महामुने कृते when we try to get different forms of spiritual knowledge and that's there in the previous video all right so it ended with there are three paths mentioned in the vedas one involves fruitive activities to gain promotion to better planets another involves worshiping different demigods for promotion to the planets of the demigods and another involves realizing the absolute truth and his impersonal feature and becoming one with him so now there are three things which are mentioned here but in this video that's what we will learn that there is something even superior to all these three all right so now we begin again the impersonal aspect of the absolute truth is not the highest above the impersonal feature is the paramatma feature and above that above this is the personal feature of the absolute truth or bhagwan shrimad bhagavatam gives information about the absolute truth in his personal feature that means shrimad bhagavatam talks about the personal form of god it is higher than impersonalist literatures and higher than the gyana kanda division of the vedas it is even higher than the karma kanda division and even higher than the upasana kand division because it recommends the worship of the supreme personality of god at lord shri krishna now these are different uh, divisions within the scriptures the gyana kanda the karma kand the upasana kand gyana kand means having just studying the scriptures for gaining knowledge what's going on in this world then karma kand means we want materialistic benefits for that we are doing different kinds of worship like worshiping uh different demigods for boons like you know having a good husband or a good wife or these kind of things or money especially and upasana kanda shows that we do things for higher purposes for spiritual purposes but that's also not the highest because shrimad bhagavatam talks directly worshiping of lord krishna who um, who is mentioned here as the supreme personality of godhead and shrimad bhagavatam says etah cha am sakala pumsam krishnastu bhagwan swam in the karma kanda there is competition to reach heavenly planets for better sense gratification sense gratification means enjoyment of the senses we want to eat good food we want to enjoy the company of the opposite sex etc money etc and there is a similar competition in the gyana kand and the upasana kand the shrimad bhagavatam is superior to all of these because it aims at the supreme truth which is the substance or the root of all categories 
From Srimad Bhagavatam, one can come to know the substance as well as the categories. The substance is the absolute truth, the supreme lord and all emanations are relative forms of energy. Nothing is apart from the substance, but at the same time the energies are different from the substance. This conception is not contradictory. Srimad Bhagavatam explicitly promulgates these, this simultaneous one and different philosophy of the Vedanta Sutra which begins with the Janma Adi Asya. Janma Adi Asya The first shloka, that's what is there. So basically here they've explained that the uh, energy and the source are different and they have similarities also like light is different from uh, like sunlight and sun they are same and they are different also but ultimately they are different it's known as achintya bheda ved they are same at, but at the end they are different because but among them the sun is more important because if the sun is not there there is no sunlight this knowledge that the energy of the lord is simultaneously one with and different from the lord is an answer to the mental speculators attempt to establish the energy as the absolute so some people say that Oh, God's energies are absolute. Alright, so energy is only coming from energetic. Without sun, sun ray, rays cannot exist. Alright. <clears throat> when this knowledge is factually understood, one sees the conceptions of monism and dualism to be imperfect. Development of this transcendental consciousness grounded in the conception of simultaneous one and different leads one immediately to the state of stage of freedom from the threefold miseries there is the answer to the question of this video <laughs> the threefold miseries are those miseries which arise from the mind and body those miseries inflicted by other beings and those miseries arising from natural catastrophes over which one has no control. So these are Adhyatmik, Adi Bhautika and Adi Devi Klesh. Shiva Bhagavatam begins with the surrender of the devotee unto the absolute person. The devotee is fully aware that he is one with the absolute and at the same time in the eternal position of servant to the absolute. In the material conception, one falsely thinks himself the lord of all he surveys. Everybody thinks that I am all in all. <laughs> and therefore he is always troubled by the threefold miseries of life. But as soon as one comes to know his real position as transcendental servant, he at once becomes free from all miseries. There you go. So when we realize that we are actually a servant of God, we do not suffer anymore. Externally suffering may be there, but internally because we have given up the mentality of proprietorship and controllership, we do not suffer anymore. That's what is said here. As long as the living entity is trying to master material nature, there is no possibility of his becoming servant of the Supreme. Service to the Lord is rendered in pure consciousness of one's spiritual identity by service one is immediately freed from material encumbrances. So basically this means that when we learn to please God rather than pleasing our own senses and our own whimsical mind, then we become happy. Then we get rid of the threefold miseries. Over and above this, Srimad Bhagavatam is a personal commentation on the Vedanta Sutra by Srila Vyasdev. So Vedanta Sutra as the word says Veda Anta the conclusion of the Vedas. It's like the end of the Vedas. So Vedanta Sutra's natural commentary is a Srimad Bhagavatam. Commentary is like writing something uh, in your own words to in a way that people who read they can understand. By Sri Vyasdev. So that's what the Srimad Bhagavatam is. It's a natural commentary by Vyasdev to the Vedanta Sutra. It was written in the maturity of his spiritual life through the mercy of Narada. Narada Muni is a spiritual master, the spiritual master of Vyasdev, as we all know. Sri Vyasdev is the authorized incarnation of Narayan, the personality of Godhead. He is one of the Shaktyavesh avataras. Shaktyavesh avatara means 
he is a living entity normal person but he is specially empowered by god by lord vishnu so he is a shaktiyavesh avatar that's what is the meaning of the word shaktiyavesh therefore there is no question as to his authority he is the author of all the vedic literatures yet he recommends the study of shrimad bhagavatam above all others he is the author of all vedic all other vedic literatures yes he has written all the scriptures in other puranas there are different methods set forth by which one can worship the demigods but in the bhagavatam the on, only the supreme lord is mentioned the supreme lord is the total body and the demigods are the different parts of that body consequently by worshiping the supreme lord one does not need to worship the demigods the supreme lord becomes fixed in the heart of the devotee immediately Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has recommended the Shrimad Bhagavatam as the spotless Puran and distinguishes it from all other Puranas. The word Amalam Puranam is used. So basically, the uniqueness and beauty of Shrimad Bhagavatam is being stressed here. So sometimes people say that okay, I am worshiping uh, Indra or I am worshiping Ganesh or I am worshiping somebody else, and if I worship Lord Vishnu. then maybe they will uh, feel bad and they they will punish me no it's not like that because they are all in a way part of lord vishnu it's like written here that you know they are different parts of that body if you consider him to be like the total body so if you worship the whole the parts are automatically satisfied so if you eat food then uh, you don't have to individually provide energy to your hands and legs everybody gets energy by default So Shrimad Bhagavatam, as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, is the spotless Purana, Amalam Puranam. So we'll read more about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the coming verses, hopefully. The proper method of receiving this transcendental message is to hear submissively. A challenging attitude cannot help one realize this transcendental message. One particular word is used herein for proper guidance. The word is. shushrushu one must be anxious to hear this transcendental message the desire to sincerely hear is the first qualification so if you want to be advancing in our spiritual life and at the same time simultaneously parallelly get rid of material miseries then we must develop a desire to hear the message of the shrimad bhagavatam submissively submissively means we do not quarrel or we do not argue this does not mean we do not ask questions but questions should be asked in a mood of humility and in a mood to understand what is there in the shrimad bhagavatam all right but if we are skeptically arguing or we are doubting what vyasadev has written or we are uh, insulting the shrimad bhagavatam then we cannot make any progress because then the very agenda is defeated less fortunate persons are not at all interested in hearing this shrimad bhagavatam wow that means if you are hearing then you are very fortunate the process is simple but the application is difficult unfortunate people find enough time to hear all ideal idle social and political conversations but when invited to attend a meeting of devotees to hear shrimad bhagavatam they suddenly become reluctant you go and uh, catch anybody in the street hey there is a spiritual program will you come they will say oh no actually my girlfriend is calling my boyfriend is calling my husband is calling my wife is calling my boss is calling my friend is calling my father is father is calling my mother is calling they remember the entire universe my god such a level of uh, disinterest which they have you know i can use many words but i don't want to spoil it here <laughs> they suddenly become reluctant nobody is interested in uh, attending spiritual program sometimes professional readers of the bhagavatam immediately plunge into the confidential topics of the past times of the supreme lord which they seemingly interpret as sex literature so this is uh, mentioned about uh, lord krishna's past times with the gopis which is there in the 10th canto which is very highly elevated and it's very pure and very spiritual but sometimes people think that oh you know god is also enjoying like we are enjoying so why can't we enjoy if he is enjoying so they think that the leela of uh, lord krishna with the gopis 
in Vrindavan it's also like uh, the man and a woman enjoying because they are foolish they do not know what that is that's very highly elevated spiritual reciprocation between God and his devotees but apparently to us because we are contaminated it seems very mundane and very materialistic Shrimad Bhagavatam is meant to be heard from the beginning so in 10th canto these pastimes are there but we are starting with the first canto maybe 10th canto we will reach after 40 years hopefully <laughs> those who are fit to assimilate this work are mentioned in this shloka one becomes qualified to hear Srimad Bhagavatam after many pious deeds. So, if you are hearing this video, it's not that just you are hearing. Like in my channel, currently I have around 20,000 subscribers. But when I upload a video on Srimad Bhagavatam, within 24 hours, I do not get more than 500, 600 views. So, that means among the 20,000, currently only 5, 600 must have done some pious deeds because of which they are getting... Uh, this benefit of hearing this, all right. One becomes qualified to hear Srimad Bhagavatam after many pious deeds. So, if you are hearing, consider yourself lucky, yes. And I am also lucky because I am able to speak on this. The intelligent person with thoughtful discretion can be assured by the great sage Vyasdev that he can realize the Supreme Personality directly by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Without undergoing the different stages of realization set forth in the Vedas, one can be lifted immediately to the position of Paramhamsa simply by agreeing to receive this message. There ends this purport to the second verse of the first canto, first chapter. All right. So that's what is stressed here that when we hear the Srimad Bhagavatam submissively, then we can get freedom from the material miseries because then we understand who God is. He is our master and we need to serve him. So that is the time when we will realize that actually we are not the enjoyer, controller and proprietor. Then our expectations from this world and worldly objects will reduce. And that is the time when we will realize that we are actually spirit souls. Of course, that's easier said than done, but that's the process. So, the first step is to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, if you have not watched the other videos of Srimad Bhagavatam, which I have, then please watch it and please continue watching this series. Okay, it's very important. You don't watch any of my videos, I have no problem. But if you don't watch this, <laughs> I will still like it if you watch. All right. So, there you go. Thank you very much for your rapt attention. Alright. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know how to get rid of material miseries. Alright. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And yes, if you want a consultation from me, then you can please go down to my website to book a reading. Alright. Bye-bye. See you.